Can you get a pair of scissors, please? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring a section of this video. So just over a week ago, I started displaying symptoms of the coronavirus. I think I picked it up about two weeks ago. And uh, since then, I have been in self-isolation, hence the what well, the admins have started calling the Coro tea. Turns out I still can't grow here. This isn't shade, this is literally just how it grows. But I thought I should do a little vlog about the experiences of the past week or so, but also document what's gonna happen over the next couple of days because we're about to enter a very unusual period uh, in the house. First though, I've, I've, let me just, okay, now that's better. I'm currently recording this on day 11 after I started displaying symptoms of coronavirus and as of the time of recording, I feel about 90% of the way recovered. What's been interesting with this virus is that different people seem to get very different symptoms. Um, there are certain symptoms which are much more common than others, but some people will report fever, other people seem to report chills, or joint pain, or nausea, or a rash. Um, I seem to have got a, a selection, a pick and mix of, of the symptoms. First of all, it manifested as a really quite profound fatigue, but then it manifested as a dry, persistent, cough, uh, which kind of set alarm bells ringing, uh, but I just thought that was a cold. I thought this was my brain, you know, telling me that something was there when it wasn't. You, just because you know coronavirus is out there in the world, you're imagining this thing. Um, but then, unfortunately, I also developed really kind of difficulty breathing. I was getting out of breath um, just sitting up in bed. I was getting out of breath trying to watch YouTube videos, and um, everything together uh, made me, yeah. Not great, would, would not recommend the experience. Now you may well say, okay Simon, but how do you know that you actually had the virus? Did you get yourself tested? And the answer to that is yes, I did get myself tested because Pixel Girl, my partner, is an essential worker, so she was able to get tested and I was able to go with her. But interestingly, my test came back negative. The test that we did was a self-administered one, so you, you drove up to a, uh, a testing station, you open the window a crack and they popped a, a sachet with instructions and a kit through the window and then you went and parked up. Uh, and it was a deeply unpleasant experience. I uh, called up a friend of mine I went to uni with, who's now a practicing medical doctor, um, and in a very breathy um, conversation, um, we, I learned that basically the self-administered tests in the UK have a surprisingly high false negative rate, 20, maybe 30%. So despite that negative result on the test, my friend was pretty convinced that I actually had the virus because of the severity of the symptoms I was displaying. And he was actually quite concerned. He said, if things got much worse, especially with regards to the breathing, I really should be going into hospital to get an oxygen support. Fortunately, I didn't get any worse and so could stay at home, but this posed a problem. My partner, Pixel Girl, was an essential worker and also asthmatic, so an at-risk group for coronavirus. And while she likely already had the virus at this point, at the recommendation of my doctor friend, we decided to try and minimise her viral load by self-isolating within the house. She was to live entirely downstairs while I lived entirely upstairs. That meant that we had minimal contact and only shared the bathroom, which it was my responsibility to keep spotlessly clean. Clean. She, on the other hand, because the kitchen was downstairs, had to do all the cooking and washing up for both of us. The only time we could spend together was socially distant meals, either on the stairs, where she could leave food for me on a tray, or out the window. And previously we'd been in a long distance relationship from the UK to Spain, whereas now we were in a short distance relationship from upstairs to downstairs. This was tough because she was so close and yet so far, but ultimately worth it to try and minimise her risk. This short distance relationship has to last from when we started it, which was a couple of days after I started displaying major symptoms, uh, until a week after I stopped displaying those symptoms. So it's about two weeks. And that's a really long time to be so close to your partner, to your significant other, but not be allowed to actually spend time with them, to not actually be able to live your life normally. So close, but so far kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. Can I get a few comments about what it's like to be... It... What are you doing? I wanted to interview you, but I can't get close enough. It's so... such a distraction. No, I don't know what you mean. What's it been like being in a short distance relationship <laughs> with me? What's the last week been like? Um, it's been great. I haven't had to see you at all. But you've had to cook for me and do all my washing and all the washing up and everything. Yeah, that bit's less, been less good. Do you think our relationship's stronger for this? Um... Yes. 
Question mark. What if I swing this in your face? Probably not. <laughs> Can you not? <laughs> Thank you for this exclusive interview. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Obviously when I was really sick, I was just laying in bed. I wasn't doing very much because I wasn't capable of doing very much. I literally got tired out listening to a podcast. But as the symptoms abated and I found myself getting better, I was able to start doing more each day. I was able to start replying to messages, get out of bed, play the piano a little bit. And so it's only really been in the last couple of days where I really felt like I've been missing out by being in isolation up here because it's only really been in the last couple of days when I've been able to do stuff. Unfortunately, I haven't needed to do very much up here. Apart from the incident. So I thought that uh, the most interesting thing to happen to me this week would be getting better from coronavirus, but no. Let me just go into the uh, bedroom a second and... Got a pair of, of doves, haven't I? Lads, do you want to... Leave, please. You're right there, mate. All right, lad. Excuse me, sir. Sir. Oh, you shit. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. No, that, that way, that way, your bird brain. That's it. No, 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 no. You know, I haven't been able to leave the house for two weeks and I hadn't left the house before then for any reason for about a week before then because I was kind of feeling a little bit ill but not really ill. So I haven't been out there for the best part of a month. And much as there is a whole world of possibilities out there, there's literally everything in human existence apart from the contents of this house. The thing that I'm really looking forward to when we're allowed to end the self-isolation is just being able to spend time with Pixel Curl, who's literally downstairs. Rest of the world, take it or leave it. Just give me some time on the sofa watching Netflix with my partner. I think in any situation you have to look for the positives. At the recommendation of seemingly everyone, I tried to get back to normal as I recovered by having a regular schedule. Every day, as soon as I was able, I would get up, take medication, do some piano practice, and learn a little chemistry. This is one of those things I've been meaning to do for years, but I've never found the time. A global pandemic isn't necessarily the best time to push yourself, but every day I found a few minutes to improve myself and feel a small sense of achievement. I think I learned it's important to set these small achievable goals before moving on to the big stuff. If nothing else, just to give you a sense of momentum. But I think the isolation led to positives beyond just that. Perhaps it's just a case of absence makes the heart grow fonder, but I felt our relationship had definitely improved. I felt we got much better at communicating because we couldn't just hug stuff out, we had to talk through our problems. By putting a small separation between us, I think we both gained perspective and gained appreciation and trust for what the other does for us. Honey, can I get a Kit Kat please? Thanks. Tonight is the final night that I'll be in self-isolation, so the final night I'm here alone in bed. So tomorrow I get to actually spend some time with Pixel Girl, I get to leave the house and get to her. she gets to come up here and sleep in her own bed again. So to commemorate the occasion, I thought I'd just do a little something stupid, but hopefully fun. Can you get a pair of scissors, please? Because <laughs> I would like to welcome you to the grand, if you want to come up, welcome to the grand reopening of upstairs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh <no. laughs> Yay! Upstairs is reopened. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think that spending 
nearly two weeks apart, short distance relationship has changed the relationship. Yeah, it has changed and it's got, it's improved. I mean, it was great before, it's improved now. Saved. Because I didn't see you for two weeks and when you don't see someone, you miss them. Well, yeah, and obviously I it's like a honeymoon I didn't have to put period. up with you and like all your like annoying traits downstairs for two weeks. So I kind of put them to the back of my mind and forgot about them. So when I saw you again, I was like, oh, wow, he's a new person. So you, you're saying that it's improved the relationship because you forgot the bad bits about me? I guess. So I was going to come in here and say that it's maybe more trusting <laughs> and more patient. I think we've got better at communicating. Yes. Like, but also, you forgot my bad bits. Yeah. Also the things you said. <laughs> I feel so loved. <laughs> Certainly with the past day or two when we've actually been able to spend time together, we've felt more mature in our relationship. Mm. Just having that little separation. I don't know. To me at least, it makes it feel like we've, we've got better at being us. I was great before. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. You can cut that bit if you want. No, that's going okay. in. As I mentioned earlier, I made a small part of my daily routine in the isolation learning chemistry, which I hadn't studied for some 13 years since my GCSE, and have always wanted to get back to. You may have noticed that I was using Brilliant to do this, which was a great experience, all about learning through solving problems, and when you get something wrong, learning about why you did so. Brilliant were actually kind enough to sponsor this video, and after spending a week learning from one of their courses, I cannot recommend them highly enough. If you're interested in developing a scientific or mathematical skill, then I genuinely believe that their method of learning by doing is the best way to learn. I did chemistry, but you can take courses in other areas of science, computer science and mathematics, and they all have great illustrations, interactive problems and a well-written course structure. So if you'd like to make learning a small part of your daily routine, like I did, then head to brilliant.org slash Simon Clark, link below, and the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off their annual subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for agreeing to sponsor this quite unusual video. Thank you for watching the video, and if you're a regular viewer, for being patient with me to make it while I recovered. This experience was not great, and I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but I hoped I was able to show that some positives came out of it, and that maybe this video was one of them. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a like, give it a share if you fancy, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.